tell me why a bug or something landed on it right in the epoxy I oh my god i'm so mad right now <laughs> But today we're going to be upgrading our mugs. I'm going to show you how you can achieve this wood grain effect, show you how to apply the decal, and I'm going to show you how to take it up a notch with some notches. I'm going to show you how I make my knots, everything up close and personal today, so that way your man can feel rugged, sexy, and handsome in his man cave, and all his friends will want one too. So if you've been dying and wanting to know how to make it or just how to improve your wood grain effects, it's easy. I got you. So don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and don't forget to smash the notification bell so that way you are notified every time I post a new video. So what mugs are these? Simple Dollar Tree mugs. Yes, these Dollar Tree mugs can be transformed into something handsome and sexy. You can personalize them, put your favorite saying on them, anything you want. I'm going to be showing you everything step by step. We're going to seal it and then we're going to epoxy. These are not epoxied yet, so I'm going to show you that. I do have an order, so you're going to work with me today, and you're going to see up close and personal how I achieve this look, so keep watching. Now let's go and upgrade these mugs, and let your man feel sexy. All for a dollar from the Dollar Tree. So this is the Dollar Tree mug that we're going to do today. I'm going to place it on my little stand that comes with my bobble turner for epoxy going to take this out temporarily so I'm going to use this so that way I can turn the mug easily and I don't get any ink on my hands and this keeps it held in place tightly and securely so while we have that ready we're going to be using three different alcohol inks today we have latte I know one of them is caramel and ginger not sure which one is my favorite. So, um, I do love the ginger one, but I got all of these from Amazon and I'll have that link down below. You can use any type of brush that you want, but I do use two to three different sizes. You'll see that when I start to show you. I don't normally do this one, but I have, but you can use any of these. I have so many different type of brushes, but whatever, whatever texture, whatever strokes you like best, you just get brushes that suit you. So we're going to start. This is already cleaned and sanitized, so we're going to go ahead and apply, start to apply the alcohol ink. Now no mug is ever the same. No mug is ever the same. So you can get them similar, but as you can see here, this was one, this was another one, and I'm going to show you something else. I'm going to come back and fix this mug. But I was doing this mug last night, and it was just not um, coming out dark. So I have to go back and do it again. But actually, I kind of like some sections of the lighter part. So I will start to try to do something where I do a lighter, a lighter wood grain effect. But as you can see, the ink was running, and I was tired, so I just left it. But um, no mug is ever the same. And normally, I do like the darker style. So I'm going to show you how I achieved this look. So I just hold it and I do have some alcohol in here because you do want to have, you know, a wet brush. You don't want it to get too wet. So I just have a little bit on here, can dry it on here. I'm just going to move my inks to this side, my alcohol over here so not to get in the way. And I go back and forth changing the color inks. So all I do and I don't really look at the names of them as I'm using it, but this is the latte one. These little bottles, they're expensive, but they last a long time. So I'm just going to run that down the cup, and I start to go up, just like that. And you'll see automatically you'll get wood grains. Now, if your brush is too wet, it'll run. So I don't really like it to run, but you don't want it to be 
too dry either. So that's a little bit too wet. So I should have dried my brush some. So I'm just going to let that sit. If you rotate the cup a lot, if it's too wet, then just like on the, on the bottle turner, it will start to drip. So I'm just going to swoop up in every direction. Don't forget your handle. And you'll see how it gets darker and darker. And the good thing about this is the more you do it, you get different looks and you learn my phone going off and you learn what you like. I'm trying to talk at the same time, but I think when you do these for me, I try to be nice and quiet. This is so soothing, like creating these wood grain effects, these lines. Sometimes I like to curve. Just rotate in the switching out. The mug. So you see how that spreads out because I started to turn, but I don't want that. So I let it sit for a hot second. And you want to do nice, even strokes from the top to the bottom. Don't forget to get underneath the handle. Sometimes I do my handle last, but you don't want, you want to do it as you go, because if you do it as you go, you know, cause say for instance, you do your whole mug and you do your handle last, it drips and mess up the mug. So I always do it as I go, working my way around. So now I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit more, but I'm going to dry it off because I don't want the brush too wet. My brush is still a little bit too wet for me. They, they absorb so much of the alcohol. So right now I'm just doing basically, you know, even strokes. I'll start to kind of get a design because I'm trying to spread out that alcohol. I believe that one was the latte one because well, that's the ginger one. The ginger one is the one I really like because it gives it a darker. I do want to get the espresso. You do not have to go in straight lines. Sometimes I curve it because what wood grain or tree is always straight. So that's kind of creating like little knots right there and I didn't even do anything yet. See how easy that is? Get you a brush that you love. I love that texture right there. I'm going to hold that so that doesn't run. Now I'm going to turn it. I'm going to apply more. And just start to create. When it gathers and makes a nice dark line, that's what gives it the realistic look. The handle is such a small area, so sometimes it's hard to get get it dark in that little small space. You don't want to forget about underneath. 
So I'm just going to speed through this a little bit because, you know, these mugs do take some time and I do not want to bore you guys too much. Again, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. Stay tuned for the finished product. I hope that you like it. I'm trying to do as much as I can on video with this new channel so that way I can show all the work that I do. But it does take a lot to record. So I would appreciate you guys giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel because I have so much more content. Now let's get back to the mug. I'm just going to look at it from this angle. Really like this side. I created a knot and I didn't even do anything yet. But I'll clean that up and make that just a little bit better. Because that's not how I typically make my knots. Get rid of that. So really like that. So let's get this side looking better. you see my handle on this side is completely <laughs> I got to do my handle under here how did I miss that okay so we gotta lightly and I'm just gonna fix that up can't forget about the little spots underneath now because I'm holding it this way I gotta Make sure I didn't mess up the bottom of the mug. Okay. You see how it's dripping? Okay. Now, clean that up. Which one is my ginger? I need a ginger to make it just a little bit darker. And this one. And that's why I put something down over my table, not to mess up my table. Always want to protect the surface that you're working on. Okay. And that looks okay. I'm good with that. So now, before I do anything, I'm going to do the bottom. And I'm just going to apply... You don't want it to run, so, and it already did. Lightly, and I'm just gonna make circles. So, because that ran off the side, now I gotta do that again. But that is okay. Because I actually. knows it might come out even better okay so I'm gonna hold it straight up this time one drop definitely doesn't take a lot the cup is going to be on the bottom anyway so now I'm going to just start with um, the knot over here so I'll do a knot here now this is when you take a smaller brush put a little bit of oil on the brush of oil put a little bit of alcohol oil on the brush and I'm going to start my knot in the middle. So when you put the alcohol on it, it pushes the ink up. So now I'm just going to start forming and creating lines. Now I have a, um, a more pointier one, pointier brush. But you'll begin to see, I like this brush because I don't like my lines so white. I wish this was a little bit more pointy, but it's not. But I like the way it moves 
the ink because I do like for it to settle in dark spots. Then I go back and use this one just a little bit because this one is more pointy but you see it clears out the white spots and I don't really like that. I like it to remain faded so I don't like that look. So if that's the look you want um, then you can definitely use that. So I'll just apply a little bit more oil so that way I can keep it kind of dark. I just did that to show you all. Because you can still create nice lines. So you're basically just pushing where you want the ink to go. Did a bristle just come off? A bristle just came off. So now I need to push that bristle out the way. Out of the way. Because that will mess up the stroke. So now that you have the basis on how to start and form a knot, you're just creating something original to your liking, something that you know you believe your customers would love. I'm speeding this up because sometimes these knots do take a while and I like to take my time because I am selling these, so I'm going 10 times as fast. You can make these knots however you like, whatever your heart desires, however light, however dark, however small, however large. I've actually never even looked at an actual like tree knot up close to copy, so I'm basically just going off of you know freehand and no knot is ever the same so I just try to keep the same method you know I'm just creating these lines and whatever comes out whatever strokes my fancy and however I like it that's when I stop so just do what you like so now I'm going to work on my second knot. I always try to put two knots. Now this time I'm doing a double knot and I actually did a double knot for the first time by mistake and I thought it looked really nice. So you just want to be original. You want to be creative. And like I said, there's no rhyme or reason. There's no right or wrong. You just want yours to, you know, pop, stand out. So my camera actually stopped. So I'm going to show you what the finished product looks like in just a second. I think my camera cut off and... I can't tell yet if it caught everything, but these are the knots that I created. If you look slowly, I really hope everything caught on camera. On this side, I did the double knots. So I'm gonna turn it this way now. It's a knot right over here. And this is the side with the double knots. Okay, so this is one that I did last night. Look at those knots. Those are so beautiful. This is the first time I did like a double knot on one side. And then I have a bigger knot over here. I already cleaned off the edges. I don't mind going so um, when I wipe. And I still need to clean it up just a little bit more. Yeah. So I'm just taking... A little bit of the, not a lot because you don't want it to spread. And all I do is wipe the brim. Make sure you get all of the ink from the inside and around the brim in a nice smooth line. The ink is okay right there and that's kind of dry from last night because that will be covered by the decal. I just don't want anything on the brim on the outside. Okay, so that's good. So first, I just cut little strips like this from the Oracle 651, just little boxes. So that way I can apply around the sides of it. I'm just gonna weed it up and just pull that up just like that. I'm going to lay it down gently not to mess it up and I always start from right here so that way my corners can meet. Now I'm doing this upside down so I'm actually going to have to turn it this way. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing because I want to make sure I get it good. So I'm applying it right to the brim. Now because it's going to be round you just want to stretch it and put it in place 
right on top. Taking my time, going nice and slow because I want this to lay flat. Once you epoxy it, um, the very first one I did, I saw where I could definitely improve because you want it to be nice and flat. You don't want bubbles. Right at the top, making sure it's nice. And you see it's just enough. This is the 12 by 12 sheet. Make sure that lines up perfectly. And then you just cut. You can use uh, an X-Acto knife. I don't want to use an X-Acto knife because I don't want to scrape the cup at all. Just going to overlay it and then cut. You just want to make sure you don't get no black at the top of the rim. Because remember, your epoxy is not going to go up there. And you meet that perfectly. So that's how I... Do that. That's the top line. Now I'm going to do the bottom. So I'm going to take another one. Weed that off. And now I'm going to do the same thing. Let's see if I can. Yep. Oh, I can't see it that way. So you'll have to see it upside down. And I'm going to start at the bottom. Now this side is definitely smaller and slimmer. So definitely have to take your time smoothing the bottom one out because already, you know, it gets, um, it starts bubbling. So I just keep mashing down, mash down to underneath the bottom. I love these mugs. They're so easy to do. And you definitely can, you know, make some money. Your most expensive thing is buying the epoxy. But what man doesn't love a nice, rugged, personalized, or funny saying mug? And once you seal it with the epoxy, they just look so nice. So you can come up with so many different designs. So because you have to curve this mug, sometimes it's so frustrating, but I just keep working with it, trying to get it as straight as possible until I meet the end, just like that. Oops. You see, you'll have a lot more left over because it's slimmer on this side. Just cut that away and then just mash that down. So now that's how you have your barrel effect. And you just mash it in so that way it is nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm gonna set this aside. Now all I'm gonna do is transfer this and I'm gonna use my transfer tape. And I still, if you've been watching my channel, I still have not found my, um, the scraper, if that's what you call it. And I have to buy a new one. So I have just been using like the back of a card. If you've never done this, this is really easy. Just take it. You just want to apply pressure to make sure it adheres to the transfer tape. Making sure hopefully everything transfers in one swoop. Sometimes it's stubborn. You want to pull back just like so. Perfect. I'm going to lay this down because I want to make sure I get this nice and centered. Now, normally I have something under here, and today I don't. So, actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to lay that down so that doesn't get messed up. I'm going to use a towel to prop this on so that way it can kind of be a little bit better. I still need something under here. 
And I'm just going to stick this under here to try to keep that up. There we go. And actually, I need to turn it to me because this is actually going to someone. And then I'll turn it back around to you all. So I got to make sure I have it centered. Now, I have it because it's the right hand. So you want to make sure you put it on the right side. So when you hold your mug in this way, that's the side you know that it should be going on. This is the center of the mug. So if I were to fold my, if I were to fold my design, that way I know exactly where my center is. It's kind of hard to see the center on transfer tape. But I'm gonna press it just a little bit more. I know my design. All right. So kind of before the K is centered. Okay. And I'm just going to even that out and press that down. Even that out and press that down. You don't want any bubbles. Now I can turn it around to you all so you can see it a little bit better. And you just want to pull 45 degree angle. I never pull straight. Pull that back. going to stick this right back down on my um stick this right back down on the carrier sheet because you can use this a few more times before it's dull that transferred perfectly now this is ready for the acrylic coat because you want to seal this in you don't want epoxy getting underneath this um this vinyl so that way it doesn't lift up but that looks really nice I'm going to be using the Krylon acrylic spray and I'm going to give it two coats. doesn't take much just because I'm in my room and I normally don't spray in here and I have other stuff over there. I'm just going to use this to guard, protect my other stuff. So just a light spray and I'm going to turn, light spray. This just seals and locks everything in and it keeps the shine. I sound like a commercial. Don't forget the bottom. So I'm in my garage and I'm about to do the epoxy. I'm going to put my gloves on. I'm outside of my garage. It's well ventilated. Garage is open. So if you hear the birds chirping, that's because I'm in my garage. Um, I have my mask. And I am about to get started. Okay. There was a huge bumblebee and I was like freaking out but it's gone okay my epoxy is mixed up I'm going to start applying it I'm gonna go ahead now you can do it any way you want I just use my hands and I just start rubbing it on and once it's smooth I rub down this way and now turn it on. I like my first coat to be thin. my handle as well I should actually turn it the other way I'm going underneath the handle I'm just smoothing it all out, top to bottom, running my finger across the top of the brim. Make sure that is smooth. And 
and then I'm going to start, ooh, didn't mean to do that, start bringing it down. bottom you want to make sure that bottom is even you don't want your mug lopsided so you want to make sure it's nice and smooth put a thin coat because you will have to come back and do another coat I don't always do three coats because I don't need it and I don't want to waste my epoxy I know a lot of people do three coats but there's no glitter on here if there was glitter then I would but I put my vinyl on before I do epoxy so it's not like a decal so technically it's sealed in after two coats I know one time I did it the last time and it got stuck to here so I want to make sure that doesn't get stuck because it is hard <laughs> to it gets stuck onto the mug I'm talking about the black foam now you'll know once it starts to set because then the epoxy will start getting hard so I'm just mashing this because there was epoxy you can feel where the vinyl is like right here so I just do a light brushing because I want my bottom surface to be nice and smooth with that vinyl decal do the same thing for at the top You want to make sure it is nice and smooth all the way around. So simple and fast. I love these wood grain mugs. I'm going to leave it because that actually looks good. Now I'm just going to take my Wagner gun. And just lightly... Make sure there's no air bubbles. I don't really see too many, but I always do this just in case. This is a really great gun. I'll have this link down below in the description box as well. You can use this for so many different things and it comes with a nice case and it comes with so many different attachments as well. So this baby is really good. It is so powerful. It has different settings, different temperature levels and everything. So I'll definitely have this link down below in the description box if anyone is interested. And they do have um, like three different variations, smaller sizes and everything. So I'm back in the garage, it's the next day, and I would have been done with this mug. It has turned, let me take this mask down for right now, it has turned for about a good 12 hours, but last night I came in to check on it, and I don't know if you can see, look at that, do y'all see that little spot right there? Tell me why a bug or something landed on it, right in the epoxy. I tried to get it off, but of course, that... um that just made it worse. I'm trying to see if I can give you a side angle. I don't know if you can see it from the side. So now what I have to do is definitely sand it. This was two coats. It would have been done, 
but now I have to sand it and then do another coat. So I am so mad. This is like, it feels so good. I'm using my handheld phone right now because, um, like, this is hard. This is good. It's set overnight. This is completely hard. It has turned for um, 12 hours. So I was going to be letting this cure for the full 24 hours and let it set tomorrow. I'm going to ship out tomorrow. But now I'm just going to have to go ahead, sand it really quick, let it turn for about another six to eight hours. And yeah, because I can't even feel that. Oh my God, I'm so mad right now. So we're going to sand that down. But because my other camera died, I'm going to have to do that off camera and I'll come back and I'll show you once it's done. But you can definitely see right there. Messed up my epoxy. I've sanded this area down. This is really smooth now again but it did still i guess that bug went down got really caught in there so i don't want to go down too far because my epoxy layers aren't that um aren't that thick um looks like it but i just don't want to go down too far because i don't normally sand my mugs at all uh, i'm making sure my bottom is completely smooth because you want your mug to definitely lay flat and stand, stand, um, sit straight. So I already sanded it pretty much and took out because I have that vinyl and it comes curves down. So that's the only place. Everything else is good. Normally, you want to clean your mugs with acetone, pure acetone, but I'm all out. So I'm going to just use alcohol and you don't want to use a paper towel. This is a cleaning cloth because a paper towel will leave those fuzzies and you don't want that. So I already cleaned it once because I just decided to go back in just a little bit more. So I'm just removing all the excess sand. I had just felt a little small spot on the bottom that I wanted to clean up. So as you can see, it didn't remove all the gloss. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do another coat. I just wanted to make sure that area was smooth, but I still see some of that and I don't wanna, but see, look at the fly. Oh my God. I'm gonna take this in the house um, because these bugs are unreal. I'm going to have to close my garage as well. So this is about 10 ml total. Of course, you use one to one ratio. I'm going to stir this for about four to five minutes because I'm outside. And I left my resin outside last night. And even though it's warm, it still gets chilly at night. And it needs to be about, it needs to be in about 77 degree temperature. So I'm just going to mix this until it's nice and warm. I always still have little bubbles in my resin, even after mixing for five minutes. But I've never had problems because I just, you know, hit it with my heat gun. So this is my final layer of epoxy. Had to do three layers for the very first time because a bug got in my mug. <laughs> but I'm just gonna hit this with the heat gun. Again, you do need some sort of heat gun to get rid of air bubbles. And this leaves a clear, glossy finish. And I love it. Now let's wrap up this video. Okay, the mug is finally done. I just have to clean out the inside. And as you saw, I had to, um, and as you saw, I had to coat this three times I have never done that so I got some of that foam on the inside so I'm just taking my Zacto knife and I'm just going to scrape out the inside to clean this up so I'm going to do that really quick and then I'll show you up close what it looks like I'm trying to get this out so I can hurry up and get to the post office I have some other mugs I know this is not uh, about the blinging which I know I bling mugs so here's some of the other mugs that I did this one um, no, which one this one actually goes with this order and these three um, go with one order but this one this person ordered this one and this one so I'm gonna get all of these cleaned up packaged up and ready to go
Here is my finished product, my wood grain mug. I hope you like it. This is how it turned out. I love these mugs. They are rugged. You can customize them any way you like. I do all different type of designs. So if you like any of these mugs that you see here, definitely I'll have my link down below. These make great gifts to give to your friends, to the man in your life. Any guy would love these mugs. Well, everything is sealed in. This is permanent. This is dishwasher safe. The epoxy that I use is FDA approved. So, and these are solid. I did let this dry for a full 24 hours. So this has cured and set after turning about it has turned probably about um, 12 to 18 hours total. So this is the finished product. Let me know if you like down below in the comments. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel because I'm bringing you weekly content on my business. As always, I will see you all in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.